formalities out of the way. Okay, now that we've got some of those formalities out of the way, we'll go ahead and uh, get started. Um, so my name is Beth Sobolewski. I'm the Director of Admissions at the Ford School, and i um, really happy to have a chance to talk with you guys today. Uh, I have some of my colleagues on the call as well, so I'm going to give them a chance to say hello. You've obviously already met Trish, who's kind of our right-hand admissions person, so you want to say hi, Trish? Hi, everyone. Nice to see you. Uh, my name is Trish Shire, and I am the Recruiting and PPI Coordinator at the Ford School. Nice to see you. Amy? Hi, all. I am Amy Flanagan. So I'm the BA program coordinator and basically do all the advising of the current Ford students. Thank you. Hello. Is Avery, is Avery here? Hello. Okay. Hi, could I speak to Frank? Uh, did you have a question? Oh. All right. So I was like, uh, Camille, do you want to say hi? Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Camille. I'm a senior in the Ford School uh, studying public policy, but my focus area is in social justice, intersectionality and public policy. Um, I, along with Jonah, am one of the peer advisors for the Ford School this year. So Jonah and I are available if you have any questions about the program, wanna get a student perspective, um, but we also help out some of the current students on all the different questions that they may have about the Ford School. Uh, we definitely encourage you to apply and ask us any questions you have. Thanks, Camille. And Jonah? Hi, everybody. My name is Jonah Jacobs. Uh, I'm a senior studying public policy at the Ford School. My focus area is international conflict and cooperation. And as Camille said, we're the um, BA peer advisors and here to answer any questions you have about the program, what it's like to be in Ford. Um, and yeah, just, just here for you in any way you need. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate it. So I'm going to go ahead. I have a short PowerPoint. I'm sure that you guys are probably as sick as I am at looking at PowerPoints on Zoom, but I'm going to share my screen with you really quickly um, just to go over some uh, information. And hopefully I will find it quickly. I should have pulled it up sooner. Sorry, you guys. And one second, let me just, I promise I will not take very long to find this. Well, I could be lying. That delay. All right, so I'm sure you mostly know the basics about the BA program, right? It's a it's an upper division program. You join us in that you apply in winter semester of your sophomore year, um, and then uh, join us for your junior and senior years of the program. Um, it's a it's a small program, so we have an entering class of about 80 students. It is very much intended to be um, a liberal arts program. It's not we don't we don't. Uh, view it as a pre-professional program, but a liberal arts program. So you would take um, the same, you know, similar distributions to what you would if you were in a major in LSNA. Um, we really want you to take uh, classes across a variety of social sciences. Um, but within that, we're trying really hard to talk to students about not just theory and problems, but also potential solutions and how you evaluate um, both the problems and their solutions. Um, you'll see the core coursework includes uh, classes in econ, political science, and stats. Um, but within that, you have the opportunity through the focus area and through your electives to um, tailor the degree to your policy area of interest. Um, you already heard me say the other two bullets on this slide. So um, the, the BA program was launched in 2007. And um, we, we really launched the, pro, the, the undergraduate program for a couple of different reasons. Um, I mentioned the interdisciplinary approach. So policy problems do not fit neatly into academic disciplines, right? So any public problem that you're dealing with is not solely a, a sociological problem, right? Or an economic problem, but it has overlaps in uh, applications across those different social sciences. But you need to understand the social sciences and the theories um, included in those to, to come up with really good solutions to public problems. 
Um, I mentioned that the distributions are pretty much the same as an LSNA um, because Econ 101 and 102 are prerequisites for our program. Those get counted a little bit differently, um, but, but STAS 250 will still take care of your QR requirement. We do have the same uh, fourth term pro proficiency in foreign language as an LSNA. Um, and and the, as I mentioned, the distribution credits. So this is a list of our required courses. I mentioned that they would be across social sciences, right? So 320 is uh, a more political science influence class, right? Talking about political institutions and politics. The 330 class is our microeconomics class. Um, Econ uh, 101 is a prereq for that. Stats 250, um, for those of you that uh, might be interested in taking, you're welcome to take that before you come to Ford, but you don't have to. Um, so that's something that you can take once you arrive. Uh, we require a values and ethics class. So we have a variety of different topics within values and ethics that students can take, but you do need to take a class related to um, values and ethics. We have an applied learning seminar. So that's a class that you take in the fall semester of junior year looking at a particular policy topic and the whole class is together for that, um, as well as the uh, 479 class, uh, which is a, a, a version of program evaluation. Um, you take a policy seminar each of your two years. So one as a junior and one as a senior, and we have a variety of different, you'll see some of those topics a little bit later in the slideshow. Um, so we try to allow students to take the policy seminar that would be most aligned with their interests. And you guys and you and uh, our students fill out a survey to sort of rank those. Um, and then six additional elective classes within uh, the Ford School and a focus area that we'll talk about a little bit more. Um, we do often hear students say, well, can I do, you know, with, with all these requirements and stuff, can I do study abroad? Can I do a study away term? We very much encourage that. Um, obviously, the last, you know, last winter and this winter have been a little challenging in that uh, arena. Um, but hopefully we'll, we'll get back to normal before too much longer, I hope. Um, so certainly spending time, the, the winter semester of junior year is probably the time the majority of students take that study abroad term. Um, we've had quite a number of students who've done Michigan and Washington. Some do it before they come to Ford, but others do it after they um, are students at Ford. So certainly um, that is, it is something that we encourage you to incorporate if you're interested. So the policy seminars. So those are really small classes. We try to cap those at about 20 students um, on a particular policy issue uh, taught by a faculty member within the Ford School really intended to be in, in an in-depth look at a particular policy topic, um, allowing our students to um, apply a variety of different skills that they've learned along the way. So um, many of the classes have uh, visiting, uh, you know, guest lecturers and that sort of thing, policymakers, um, some kind of uh, final paper. Uh, so trying to, to really give you that in-depth experience with that policy seminar. So here's a list of the policy seminars uh, for the last couple of years. Um, you can see that we try to cover a range of both internationally focused and more domestically focused topics. Um, unfortunately, be, because of the capacity within the policy seminars, we're only able to allow students to take one as a junior and one as a senior, but um, hopefully there's, there's a seminar that, that speaks to your interests somewhere along the way. Um, and these are some of the policy electives that uh, have been offered this past year. So you can see there's quite an array of those as well. Um, some that are more skills-based, right? The STATA class, uh, the Excel class, others that are more topical. Um, so trying to give students the opportunity to bring those classes into both their focus area or just into their electives. Um, so the focus area that I keep referring to, what does that mean? So I kind of think of the focus area as maybe a major within a major, which sounds a little cliche, but really it's an opportunity for you to learn more in depth about a topic that's of interest to you. Uh, you'll see in a minute when we look at some of the listings, some, some are relatively broadly defined, others are really quite um, narrowly defined. So it's, it's kind of up to you how you, how you couch that. 
Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna ask uh, Camille and Jonah to jump in here in just a second because they work really closely with the students on this uh, particular area. But it's really intended to help you develop, as the slide says, depth and breadth of knowledge in a particular area. You can incorporate an LSNA minor as part of the focus area. So, um, Camille and Jonah, do you want to, you know, talk? both about your focus area and sort of about how you work with students around that. Um, Camille, you wanna kick us off? Sure. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, my focus area is social justice, intersectionality and public policy. So I wanted to look at the ways in which public policy affects people of different identities. Um, so whether that be through education, criminal justice, um, all different areas of policy environment, um, and so that's sort of how I designed my focus area. And so my four courses come from political science, public policy, and sociology. So it's a really sort of wide variety of classes that I get to take. Um, Jonah, you can talk more about yours, but basically the way that we advise students is just to take a general topic that you're interested in within public policy. It can be the policy of a specific region or a specific type of policy like healthcare policy. Um, or the way policy interacts with another area like the media. Um, and so you can really make it whatever you're interested in. And it's a really great way to explore courses outside of the Ford School as well. Um, so if you're like interested in things outside of public policy, but you're still sort of wanting to major in public policy, the focus area is a great way to sort of like kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, I echo everything Camille said. The The focus area is one of my favorite parts of the, um, the BA program because it really allows you to um, take initiative on um, your academic experience and pursue an area of public policy that you're interested in as an academic discipline or if it is goes beyond that and you know interacts with your postgraduate plans and professional or you're continuing um, graduate school. And so my focus area, as I said earlier, is international conflict and cooperation, which is a pretty kind of broad area, but really allowed me to um, kind of explore my interest in like global geopolitics, um, which um, there are four courses concerning, but um, the rest of the university also offers, um, you know, a wide variety of um, classes that support that. So I'm kind of a history nerd too. And so I got to include um, a history course about war and Greek and Roman civilization into my focus area, um, which is, you know, not exactly what you would normally find in like a public policy curriculum, but because it gets to, as Beth said, talk about um, you the depth and breadth of knowledge and um, an area of interest, you know, the focus area really allows you to, uh, to explore that and see what the rest of the university has to offer. And like Camille said, most of our um, advice to students creating their focus areas is to err on the side of a general area of um, policy interests that um, once you've defined, you can kind of explore through a variety of unique and specific lenses that um, creates just a very, very unique um, academic experience for you. Thanks, you guys. Um, so here's an example of some of the various focus areas that we've seen from students over the over the years. And you can kind of see for yourself that, you know, some of them, urban policy, right, a pretty broadly defined topic, um, as opposed to maybe something like politics and human rights in the East, right? So you do have that flexibility. Um, and there's it's it's a it's a process, right? So Camille and Jonah uh, held a session for our junior class um, last month that talked them through starting the, the focus area of uh, proposal process. Uh, it's also reviewed by faculty on our um, BA program committee. So you get lots of feedback along the way. And, you know, it, it's kind of a living document, right? Because, you know, not all classes are always offered when, you know, I mean, some semesters, they might not offer the classes that you were hoping for. So, but it's def it's, it's a, a pretty integral part, I think, of the BA program, as, as uh, Jonah and Camille have said. So what do you do with a BA in public policy? Um, that's probably, you know, I mean, that's that's the question that we hear a lot. Um, I think the answer is, you know, in many ways, a lot of the same things that you would do with a major in many other areas of the university, right? So you're getting this really terrific liberal arts education. We see students that go a lot of different places. You definitely have uh, 
a goodly percentage of students that go on to graduate education, either, you know, straight out of undergraduate or after a couple of years of work experience. So, you know, law school, uh, policy degree, public health, all popular uh, paths for our graduates. Um, we've definitely seen every year a uh, uh, handful of students that have gone on to a program like Teach for America or AmeriCorps, um, where they have the opportunity to, to put some of those um, policy skills that they've learned in undergraduate to work. Um, but, you know, consulting has become really quite popular, I think, with our grads. Um, oftentimes public sector consulting, but uh, can be more broadly defined. Um, and those, obviously, for those with uh, more of an international interest, something like teaching English abroad or a Peace Corps, something like that. So really a, a, a wide array of different paths. We do have uh, a career advisor at the Ford School, Gail Tian, who works very closely with our students, puts together a, a newsletter. Our students have access to the Ford Careers uh, database of job and internship opportunities. So providing good uh, support for our students in both, you know, if you want to do an intern, internships are not a required component of the program, but many of our students will do those between junior and senior year. Um, but also obviously for those that are looking for jobs after graduation. So lots of good resources for that. So why might you decide to choose the, pursue the, the BA program? So we talked a lot about that it, there are liberal arts degrees, um, but the way most LSNA majors are structured, you're looking really in depth at a particular discipline, whereas we're trying to look across disciplines. So, um, so a little bit different approach. Um, we do uh, very much value developing the analytical skills within our students. So um, thinking about ways to sort of measure both uh, you know, the, the, the solutions that you're proposing and, and how effective they've been. Um, our faculty are very interdisciplinary in nature. Many of our faculty members have joint appointments. Um, you can see with a wide variety of uh, schools and colleges across campus, as well as our, uh, what we call professors of practice. So folks that have been, uh, you know, coming to school to teach after a career, a distinguished career doing something else. We mentioned the, I mentioned the uh, career services advisor. So our office of student and academic services uh, is very well prepared to support our students. Um, I'll let Amy say a little bit uh, about what the work she does with students. Um, but, you know, we mentioned our peer advisors. Uh, we do have a writing center at the Ford School that is only for Ford School students, for faculty members who make, you can make individual appointments with them to help you on papers, resumes, et cetera. So uh, GSIs uh, in our core classes. So we try to provide really a well-rounded set of support services so that so our students uh, can thrive um, in our environment. It's a small school, right? So I mentioned that we admit about 80 students per class. So at, a, at any one point, we have about 160 undergraduate students. Our um, master's program is about 250. So by University of Michigan standards, we're really quite a small place. Um, so I think that does um, help our students develop a little different set of relationships with each other and with their faculty members. Um, we have a lot of research centers at the Ford School and, and a variety of ways for our students to become involved in those. Um, we've had just a terrific slate of speakers this fall and I expect that will continue into the winter. Some of them brought in by the school generally, some by some of our research centers. So, and almost all of our speakers are open uh, to students across campus. So I would encourage you to take a look at those um, and see if there's somebody that, that uh, you'd be interested in listening to um, but our students oftentimes, uh, at least in normal days, have a chance to meet with those, those faculty, those uh, speakers when they come to campus, um, student organizations. So, you know, it's a, it's a pretty thriving student community, I think. Weill Hall, um, right, that's our home base right there on the corner of Hill Street, Street and State Street. That All of our classes are offered there. Uh, there's a computer lab, uh, spaces for study, that sort of thing. So um, it's a pretty... Uh, convenient location. Um, I mentioned some of the guest speakers. So this is a listing just from this fall, this, 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 uh, the past couple of months. So you can see really a wide array of topics um, 
you know, our Dean is co-chair of the democracy and debate semester uh, this fall semester. So you can definitely see a, a bent toward that kind of a speaker, but um, pretty interesting group of folks. Uh, we do have all school events. So again, a, a really wonderful community to be part of. So why might somebody choose not to be in the Ford School? Um, so I, you know, I get a lot of questions. So we do not allow students to double major. So students in the Ford School uh, are, you know, public policy majors. Many of our students minor. Some students do more than one minor, but um, but we don't allow double majors. Um, some students really are, they really wanna do that honors thesis and that's not something that we can support in our BA program. So that might be a reason. Um, or, you know, you're really interested in a PhD program in history, for example, right? So you might wanna stay uh, in your history major. So, so some of the reasons that, you know, some of the things to consider as you think about whether or not it's the program that you wanna to apply to. The admissions, so the, the deadline to apply is February 1st. Um, the application is up now. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. We have three short essays and I'll show you that in just a little bit. Um, but but pretty, uh, I think a pretty straightforward application process. Um, we do try to balance at, uh, both academics and extracurriculars. Um, recognizing that extracurriculars in this current environment can be challenging. Um, so, right, that's going to be broadly defined. And I know, uh, you know, with grades in the winter semester coming, becoming pass fail, and that you, you may have concerns about that. We're going to work with students around all of that stuff because, because we know those are issues that are completely outside of your control. Um, so, the prerequisites are listed here. I had mentioned Econ 101 and 102, one other social science. Some of you may uh, have taken Pub Hall 201. Although probably not, because I think it's meeting at this time. Um, so, but there's you know any of the social science classes that meet distribution, um, and then a race and ethnicity course. And the prerequisites have to be done before you matriculate into the program in the fall. They do not have to be done before the uh, application deadline. And we try to get uh, decisions out to students. Um, we usually are successful getting them out in March, but certainly by the beginning. Of So I mentioned the application, the, the bottom of the slide here are the essays that we asked you to write. So we asked you to write a short essay about working with diverse groups, um, an essay about sort of how this major would align with your academic and career interests. And then we ask you to talk about a policy issue that uh, you find interesting. Um, that, you know, there's not a particular set of policy issues that we ask you to write about. So it could be something that's really important to you personally. It could be something you, that you've written on for another class that you feel well versed in. Um, there's, there's not really a, a, a right answer about what policy topic to choose for that. Um, but we do ask you to, it, it's intended to be, it's not intended to be an opinion piece, right? It's intended to be an analytical piece. So while you're certainly welcome to have a stance on the, how a, a policy issue should be handled, it's also important to recognize uh, folks on the other side, if you will. So um, spending some time thinking about the, the counter arguments to whatever you recommend. And one other thing that I'll mention that we do ask you for a resume. Um, the resume does not have to be the same resume that you would submit for a job, right? You can definitely spend some time um, you, you can definitely use some space to talk about extracurriculars. Um, if it goes up over to a couple of pages, that's perfectly fine. Um, so feel free to be a little more expansive in the information you include, include on your resume than you might in some other circumstances. Um, but that's the, that's the admissions process generally. Um, Trish, Amy, Neil, Jonah, anything that you'd like to, any advice or information that you'd like to throw in before we go to questions? All right. So I will just yes. mention on the application side, um, you know, Beth said the application is due February 1st. We don't do rolling admissions. Um, so if you are very eager and you want to get it in this week, that's great. Um, but it's not going to get reviewed until after the application deadline. 
Um, so there's really no huge benefit to you other than probably peace of mind and getting it done. Um, but, you know, we, we typically offer a form of like working with current students. We're still kind of fleshing out what that's going to look like for this year, especially with the semester um, in January starting a little later. Um, but so basically my point is that you don't have to get that application submitted as early as possible. So as long as it's in by the February 1st deadline, um, you're all set. Yeah, thank you, Trish. Um, so this slide gives you some ways to, to, have to uh, reach out to us if you have questions after this information session. Um, our website was recently redone, so uh, hopefully it's in informational for you and it, you may able, you're able to find information easily. Um, I mentioned our peer advisors. You're welcome to make uh, appointments to talk with them. Um, both Trisha and I have appointment links on our calendar. So if you go to the website and you go to the um, undergraduate admissions page, you can, you can find links to those uh, calendars. And you're always welcome to send an email to our FSPP Dash admissions mailbox and we'll, we'll respond to those inquiries as well. So um, lots of different ways to connect with us. Um, so with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen um, and